Hello and welcome sa Mataglish. Kung bago ka lang sa aking channel, ako si Ben Paul de la Cruz at layunin kong matulungan ang mga Pilipinong mag-aaral na mas maintindihan ang math. And for today, ang pag-uusapan natin ay characteristics ng isang axiomatic system. So, ang axiomatic system dapat ay may consistency. So, meaning, dapat walang axioms na nagko-contradict sa isa't isa. Okay, in other words, dapat hindi mo posibleng ma-prove ang isang statement at saka yung negation niya at the same time. In short, dapat walang any contradiction sa buong system. Another one is independence. Para maging maganda yung axiomatic system natin, dapat wala tayong mga axioms na derive using yung ibang axioms. Pag ang isang axiomatic system ay dependent, wala namang magiging conflict mismo. Yun nga lang, sa halip na gawin nating axioms yung mga dependent na axioms, magandang theorems na lang sila. So, mas onte yung magiging axioms natin, mas maganda. And lastly, maganda na ang axiomatic system ay complete. Meaning, lahat dapat ng truth within that system ay pwedeng maderive from the axioms. Okay, so ang ideal axiomatic system ay nagko-consist na itong tatlong properties na to. Dapat consistent, independent, and complete. Consider natin tong isang example na axiomatic system kung saan yung mga undefined elements niya ay dog at saka person and yung undefined relation niya ay yung friendly. So, action number one, there are exactly four dogs. Action number two, for any two distinct dogs, there is exactly one person that both dogs are friendly. Action number three, for any person, there are exactly two dogs that are friendly to that person. So, kung papansinin natin tong axiomatic system na to, masasabi natin na ito ay consistent. So, bakit consistent? Kasi yung action 1 ay walang conflict sa actions 2 and 3. Tama? Kahit nagay mong totoo yung 2 and 3, wala magiging issue sa action 1. Ganon din yung action 2, no? Wala siyang inconsistency with action 1 and action 3. Ganon din si action 3, wala siyang issue kung parehong true yung actions 1 and 2. So, consistent tong axiomatic system na to. Independent din siya kasi si action 1 ay hindi natin pwedeng ma-derive using yung actions 2 and 3. Similarly, yung action 2 hindi natin pwedeng ma-derive from actions 1 and 3. And yung action 3 ay hindi natin pwedeng ma-derive from actions 1 and 2. Isasantabi muna natin yung completeness kasi later on meron tayong discussion with regards to that. Okay? Suppose magdadagdag tayo ng fourth axiom na nagsasabing there is exactly one person. Ano mangyayari sa ating axiomatic system? Ito ba ay consistent pa din? Ito ba ay independent pa rin? Ito ba ay magpaparami ng mga pwedeng truths na ma-generate from this axiomatic system? So, i-check natin. Sabi sa axiom number one, there are exactly four dogs. And then sa axiom number 4, sinasabi doon, there is exactly one person. Ito yung dinagdag natin na axiom. By axiom 3, for any person, there are exactly two dogs that are friendly to that person. So dito, itong dalawang dogs lang na to ang friendly dito sa person na to. Yung dalawang dogs, hindi sila friendly dito. By axiom 2, for any two distinct dogs, there is exactly one person that both dogs are friendly. So, kung i-consider natin tong dalawang dogs sa kanan, dapat friendly sila sa isang person. Pero sabi sa action number 4, di ba, isa lang yung uh, person. So, wala nang mahahanap tong dalawang dogs na to na person kung saan dapat friendly sila. So, meron tayong contradiction. Hindi pwedeng mangyari na totoo yung apat na axioms. The system is now inconsistent. So, no axioms 1 to 3 lang, consistent yung axiom. Nung dinagdag natin yung fourth axiom na nagsasabing isa lang yung person, naging inconsistent na yung axiomatic system natin. What if iba yung idagdag natin? Sabihin natin there are exactly 6 persons. So, ano mangyari sa ating axiomatic system? So, consider natin yung action number 1. Sabi, merong exactly 4 dogs. 
by action 2, for any two distinct dogs, there is exactly one person that both dogs are friendly. So, i-check natin yung mga distinct pairings ng dogs. And bawat unique pair, dapat friendly sila sa nag-iisang tao lamang at wala nang iba. Sinasabi naman sa action number 3, for any person, there are exactly two dogs that are friendly to that person. So, bawat isang tao, dapat dalawang dogs lang yung friendly sa kanila and wala nang iba. So, kung i-apply natin tong actions 2 and 3, for this pair of dogs, then meron tayong isang person. Para sa pair na to, may iba pang person. Para sa pair na to, may iba pang person. Para sa pair na to, meron pang ibang person. And dito, and dito. And dito ay nakuha na natin lahat ng distinct pairings ng dogs. And nakita natin na ilan yung tao? Meron tayong 6 na persons. Okay, so satisfied yung action number 1. 2, and 3. And from the 3 axioms, pwede nating masabi na there are exactly 6 persons. Tama? Kinumbay natin yung tatlong axioms, eto yung mako-conclude natin. Pero take note yung action number 4 since sabi niya na there are exactly 6 persons. And mapapansin natin dito na exactly the same to sa na-conclude natin using yung 3 axioms. And therefore, itong action 4 na to ay dependent doon sa tatlong actions na nauna. So, by adding action number 4 sa ating axiomatic system, naging dependent na yung axiomatic system. Okay? Para sa issue ng completeness, may sagot doon si Godel. Sabi niya, in any sufficiently expressive consistent axiomatic system, there are statements of the language of that system which can neither be proved nor disproved in that system. In short, ang gusto niyang sabihin ay, any sufficiently expressive, consistent, axiomatic system is incomplete. So, basta sufficiently expressive, tapos consistent yung axiomatic system, then sure na, na incomplete yung axiomatic system. Dahil sa theorem na to ni Goodell, nasira na yung pantasya ng mga ibang mathematicians na makakuha ng axiomatic system kung saan ito ay consistent, independent, at saka complete. Okay? Meron pang another theorem si Goodell, yung second incompleteness theorem. Sinabi niya na, a consistent axiomatic system cannot prove its own consistency. Punta tayo sa isa pang example ng axiomatic system. Ito ay yung Euclidean geometry. Si Euclid, meron siyang limang postulates na pwede natin consider na limang axioms. Axiom number one, a straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point. Axiom number two, a line segment can be extended on either side to form a line. Axiom number three, a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. Axiom number four, all right angles are equal to one another. Axiom number 5, ito yung parallel lines postulate. Ano ba yung parallel lines postulate? If a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles, then the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which the sum of angles is less than two right angles. So, balikan natin yung apat na axioms kanina. So, mapapansin natin dito na napakasimple lang nung mga sinasabi nila. And somehow, parang napaka-obvious na hindi na kailangan i-prove no? nung mga ibang tao. Madaling makoconvince yung ibang tao. Pero itong axiom number 5, compared dun sa apat, complex siya. And hindi ganun ka-obvious no? na, ah, totoo yan. So, to simplify, magkoconsider tayo ng equivalent version nito. Ito yung version ni Playfair. And sinabi niya na for every line L, meron tayong line L, and for every point P not lying on L, there exists a unique line M passing through P and parallel to L. So, nag-iisa lang daw yung line na dadaan dito sa P na parallel kay L. Ito si line M. Unique daw to, wala nang iba. 
So, kung meron pang ibang lines na dadaan dito kay P, sabi natin ito, distinct kay M, hindi na siya parallel kay L. So, another line dadaan kay P, hindi na to parallel kay L. Ito yung sinasabi nung fifth postulate daw. No? Itong action number 5, o yung panglimang postulate ni Euclid, ay naging sobrang controversial para sa mga mathematicians. No? So, marami yung nag-isip na baka naman dependent to. In short, baka pwede natin itong ma-prove using yung apat na naon ng axioms. Pero sa dami na nag-try at sa tagal na nung panahon na marami nag-try na i-prove or i-disprove tong axiom number 5 using yung 4 axioms, walang nag-succeed. Okay? So, in the end, naisip nila baka naman independent talaga tong axiom 5 dun sa naon ng apat. And kung independent itong axiom number 5 dun sa apat na naon ng axioms, pag ninegate natin to, then wala pa rin siya magiging issue dun sa apat na axioms. And in the end, yun nga yung ginawa ng ibang mathematicians. Ninegate nila to, kinonsider nila what if hindi isa yung line na dadaan sa P kung saan magiging parallel sa L. What if infinitely many sila? What if wala? So dahil doon, nagkaroon ng different branches ang geometry. So, meron tayong tatlong geometries ngayon. We have Euclidean geometry, kung saan sinusunod yung limang postulates kanina or axioms. And then, we have hyperbolic geometry at saka elliptic geometry. To summarize, meron tatlong karakteristik ang ideal na axiomatic system. Dapat ito ay consistent, so walang any inconsistencies within the axioms or mga theorems na makukuha natin dito. Dapat ito ay independent, so dapat hindi natin pwede ma-derive yung mga ibang axioms from the other axioms. And dapat ito ay complete, so lahat ng totoo within that system dapat ay pwedeng ma-prove. Unfortunately, according kay Godel, hindi pwede na complete ang isang sufficiently large na axiomatic system na consistent. So, between consistency and completeness, mas preferred ng mga mathematicians ang consistency. Kasi mahirap mag-work sa isang axiomatic system na inconsistent. And that's it for this discussion. I hope nakatulong sa inyo. So, kung na-appreciate nyo itong discussion natin, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this to your friends. See you next time.